Okay, so I've been inspired today by the topic of autonomy. And it's one that's coming up for me quite a bit at the moment in terms of there seeming to be a lot of confusion around autonomy because, you know, a lot of people um, don't really understand the true nature of autonomy. Um, and they see autonomy as the same thing as being unconscious. So if we're going about our life in, a, in an autonomous way, it's like we're leaving it to something else and that we're not in charge of our life or conscious of our life. But it's actually the complete opposite. <laughs> and it's topical for me because I'm experiencing it in my life at the moment where we're in a phase with the projects that we're involved with where I'm um, freeing myself up um, to have a lot of the projects I'm involved with uh, running autonomously. And within my team, you know, there's certain people that feel a bit nervous about that, about that I'm not the one that's going to be doing uh, certain things and, or being hands-on in certain areas. And, um, you know, the potential impact of that, all totally valid things. But I want to truly explain autonomy from my perspective of being someone who's built um, a software platform that is uniquely equipped for any human being to create an autonomous business. And so I think explaining autonomy is really important. So f first of all, the main reason an autonomous business is important is because if if we want to take part in a society that collectively decides that we want to ensure any human being has the potential to live purposefully if that's what they want to do, to live meaningfully. And so in that context, you have to look at, okay, so if someone wanted to um, earn a living or to become self-reliant doing something that they absolutely love to do, you have to look at the people who are least capable, seemingly, of being able to do that. So if you look at the example of creating a business, and a self-reliant business, you think, think about all of the roadblocks that come up immediately for, uh, for an everyday person. I don't know the first thing about running a business. I don't even know how to set up a company. Uh, I've never done accounting before. I'm dyslexic. Um, you know, I mean, there's a myriad reasons why you would never even bother, regardless of how relentlessly you're being peppered with thoughts and inspiration and <laughs> obsessive uh, interest and curiosity in certain things without really understanding why. There's so many obstacles. And so the solution <laughs> is autonomy. It's And what that means is to consciously create a business that is infused with your intent, that is infused with your vision and your purpose. And, and the part of you that feels fulfilled in doing that thing is to create a business that follows that your nature, a business that follows your nature. That's what autonomy means. It's so in order for that to work, it's the very opposite of being unconscious. It's that you're so conscious and focused of who you are, how you want to express yourself, um, what your vision is, um, what you are capable of providing, willing to provide, and what are the vulnerabilities? What what are the weaknesses? And what are the things that you need access to or to be able to um, get the support from in order to realize that vision? And so it, let's look at that in context of, okay, as a society, we've decided that we want everyone to live a meaningful life. 
Yeah. I mean, if you asked any human being in the street, if you want that for everyone, of course they do. But they think it's just pie in the sky. You know, it, it, it's never going to happen. So why bother? So the indifference kicks in and the apathy kicks in, of course, because you don't truly believe that it's possible. So if you're serious about addressing this and actually moving towards a society where human beings can live meaningful lives, you have to look at the least of our citizens. And those are the people who are, who we believe would be logically the least capable of, let's say, living, creating a meaningful, autonomous business that generates an income that supports them, enables them to do everything that they want to do in their life. And so let's, so let's do that now. So in my mind, I see someone who is um, potentially uh, completely paralyzed and their only mechanism for self-expression is blinking. So if we're serious about this, we're going to say, okay, how can we um, enable this person to live a meaningful life? Well, the first thing you have to understand is what is meaning for them? What do they want? Now, this is the biggest challenge is because most people have no clue what it is they really want, what, what, what a meaningful life means to them. And therefore, they're incapable of making choices that have meaning. So, and this is a common, common theme for me. I do this for a living. And so people come to me and, you know, I've got an idea for a business and, or whatever it may be. And I help them to understand the drivers for that thing. Most of the time it's fear. If I'm being, uh, most of the time it's, yeah, it's fear. If I'm being totally honest and they want a way to generate an income that looks after them so they don't have to worry about finances. Totally natural, of course. And, but I help them to understand there's always a deeper driver and that deeper driver contains the meaning that we're actually searching for. And so if you take someone who is confined to their bed, the only means of self-expression is to be, is to blink and their only means of communication in order to engage with another human being is really some form of Morse code. I mean, I'm making assumptions here. So now let's look at this person and say, okay, I'm um, me as someone who is a consultant and the mission is how can we um, enable this person to live a meaningful life and to express themselves in a way that's meaningful to them. And they don't know. <laughs> they don't know what meaning is to them. So we then look at, okay, how can we utilize your uniqueness? And this is the key. It is your uniqueness that holds the key to meaning. Because if you look at a, an ecosystem, if you look at the ecosystems in, on the planet that thrive the most, it's the ones that contain the most biodiversity. Meaning, if you look at the spectrum of species within that ecosystem, the uniqueness of each thing is so deep. Everything is so vastly different from everything else, which enables all of those things to thrive in their own unique way because of how they uniquely express their nature into that ecosystem. All they ever have to focus on is following their nature. I'm just following my nature. I'm just being a dung beetle. I'm just being a massive tree, I'm just being a monkey, I'm just being whatever I am. And I can just trust that that uniqueness, that thing that makes me unique and different to every other species, is taking care of everything in that ecosystem. You know, I heard once, and this may or may not be true, but I heard once that the reason the panda is on the verge of extinction is because it there's only one 
species or even a subspecies or something like that of bamboo that it will eat and it's and it's rare and that's that's case in point the panda will thrive wherever that bamboo is thriving so what does that bamboo need in order to thrive and so it is our uniqueness and yet human beings we're so notorious for trying to be the same trying to fit in trying to be normal but it's the part of us that's different from everyone else that holds meaning for us and holds the potential to meet the need of someone who needs it and so in that context let's continue with the person who's who's blinking they're totally paralyzed they don't know what meaning means to them and so what is a problem that they can solve in this ecosystem what is something they can put into the ecosystem as a unique being that they are that will enable someone else in the ecosystem a panda for example to meet a currently unmet need so that they can thrive in the ecosystem and to me it's glaringly obvious and it's because i've got a second sense for this now it's become second nature to me um and this is this is where i would create a starting point i i would share and impart a vision that i can see and then we begin working from there based on how they this person responds and so you would say okay how is it that this person hasn't ended their own life or asked someone else to do it for them or how are they living day to day how do they cope with the futility of being incap virtually incapable of doing anything now that's a logical approach so this this person this unique being whose only form of self expression is to blink <clears throat> they're living they're living and that is far beyond what the people who have taken and ended their own lives have achieved and so you have someone who has had to experience the emotions of futility to probably the greatest depths of any other human being in life and they're still here they're still maybe fighting maybe just existing who knows nonetheless they're alive and that's that is an achievement that is beyond the that of someone who has ended their own life okay all of a sudden you have someone who can meet a need of someone and that is someone who is considering ending ending their own life so all of a sudden you've got a need that has the potential to be met by activating dormant potential within someone this unique being the paralyzed being you have a need and we certainly have a need for for this kind of thing right now because understand that someone that is considering ending their own life and most people don't understand this it is because is because they're holding resistance to the emotion of futility the futility it becomes so unbearable that life becomes the source of the pain existing becomes the source of that suffering and so <laughs> a tip for anyone that's that may have people around them that they think are in a dark place or considering suicide understand don't don't try and tantalize them 
them with what they have to live for. That will feel extremely oppressive and it's it seems intuitive but it's going against the grain in a big way. You have to validate what, however they're feeling. You have to show them that you're understanding that how futile they feel. You have to validate that thing, not invalidate it. So here we have a scenario where someone has the potential, that potential is currently dormant, to meet a currently unmet need, and that is of someone who is considering ending their, ending their own life. We have a rare species of bamboo, and we have a panda. And that panda is hungry. <laughs> and that bamboo is nowhere in sight. Can't see it, can't smell it. Can't access it. And so we share this vision with um, our friend, our paralyzed friend, and the eyes light up. <laughs> the eyes light up. And you can see they've come alive. Now, immediately after that spark that you see comes all of the doubt and all of the belief within themselves that's like it's not possible it's never going to happen so this crushing sense of futility follows it oh I'd absolutely love to but then but all I can do is blink I don't have enough money um even if I could do this, it would be a charity and they wouldn't be able to pay me. You know, I mean, there'll be dozens of these. And, you know, amongst my community, amongst my the people I work with, my team, we call this a backstory. It's a backstory that's, um, which is the narrative behind everything being the way it is now. And I, I understand that too. The moment that a, a, a potential was revealed to someone, um, it's it's I love it, but it, it's it's also, you know, it's bittersweet because they almost always reject it straight away. So in this scenario, how can we? And this is where autonomy comes in. The answer is autonomy. The answer is autonomy. So you look, what do we need in order to meet this currently unmet need? What is required? And so this is where consciousness comes in. You are consciously creating with absolute focus and detail, but most importantly, meaning everything, everything that is essential for to meet this currently unmet need. And so you're saying, okay, can this person run their own business? No. Can they send an email? No. Can they do anything? No. Other than communicate by blinking to share themselves with this person who's got a need that's currently unmet. And so you make a massive list and you reconcile everything that that person is incapable of being able to do. And you say, okay, we need to establish an ecosystem that is autonomous, just like every other ecosystem in nature. That is made of people who, that is made up of people who are willing and able to give of themselves to this project in order to see if we can get it to work in order to hold the space for this person to try to adapt and evolve and trial it and change it because this is the other thing that most people don't realize is that validating an idea from my experience your vision what you see in your mind and what you think all the assumptions that you have to make in order to go forward with something 
are at least the 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 end result is at least 30 40 even higher percent different than what you think it's going to turn out than the way you think it's going to turn out and as long as you are devoted to um realizing the vision in the way that it wants to come through not the way that you assume it wants to come through but the way that its nature wants to unfold and you allow the adaptation to happen you allow concepts and things you've been holding on to to die you allow them to become obsolete and get so that they can give rise to the unfoldment you can only succeed it's the only possible outcome you eventually hit a pocket of unmet need and it's because you've evolved yourself into a state to meet it not based on assumptions and guessing but based on understanding of the greater ecosystem of understanding of the individuals that you intend to service within that ecosystem assumptions are not understanding and only understanding will get you to a state of meaning and fulfillment so if you look at um, the main projects i'm involved with uh, powerhouse is the platform that enables cooperative collaboration on projects Uh, morpheus that uh, assembles teams of collaborators who are willing to give of themselves to a project that they that resonates with them that has meaning for them and we get started now how inspiring would it be ah so before we go into that the obvious thing is is how is someone going to make a living who's going to pay this person um to communicate with people who are considering ending their own lives well it may be that the 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 physical one-to-one communication isn't possible but there's still a message there's still an experience that can that can lead um to someone else reconciling their own futility within them if that story can be told so maybe it's an e-learning course maybe it's a series of videos maybe it's a way for this person to just express themselves spontaneously whatever it may be you share the vision you assemble a team of collaborators who are prepared to muck in to the point of saying you know there may need to be someone physically present in the room to translate the blinks into language and then speak to this person directly but what you do is you share the vision you share the intention you you bear your soul in terms of these are all the things that i cannot do on my own and in this case it's pretty much everything and you're asking for help you're bearing your soul this these are my deepest desires and i'm asking you to help me can you help me to realize my vision and if that resonates with someone you assemble a team around that vision and then you collaborate together until the panda can eat the bamboo and and it's not until the panda is actually eating that bamboo and thriving because of it that you have a viable business this is why people run pilot programs this is why people uh, do beta testing because a business is is the mechanism you utilize to distribute what it is you do it's not a business is not an idea of something that could happen in the future so in this scenario let's say the panda is now eating the bamboo so this person has so let's say the business model how it ended up was this person had a translator in their bedroom to translate the blinking into responses 
There was a phone system set up so that someone who was feeling, having suicidal thoughts could phone in. There was a mechanism to um, uh, to distribute the specific kind of call to um, the person who's paralysed. There was a way for the person on the other end of the phone to understand who they're connecting with and why. And they would engage. And so the business, let's say that's a charity. How many people do you know that would contribute to this person who's paralyzed in their bed? Saving, potentially saving people's lives. Would you pay them a monthly fee? 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 50 bucks? Would you support that project in that way? It may be that you don't have it in you. You don't have the time or the energy to physically support it. But you might, may want to financially support it. And then all of a sudden, you've got a whole bunch of people, all of this activated intent that was dormant before because we said, no, this is too hard. This is too hard. All of a sudden, you have someone who's paralyzed, has no meaning in their life, expressing themselves in a way that's saving someone else's life, and they're earning $5,000 a month just because it resonates so deeply with pe- with total strangers. Now, the mechanism around that person must be autonomous, must be autonomous. And in order for it to, for it to be autonomous, we have to understand the true intention, the true purpose of this, and it needs to form Well, we call it a constitution. It's a contract, basically. That everyone agrees that if you're involved in running this autonomous organization, these are the terms, these are the conditions, this is the intention, that these are the drivers. And so we're always driving towards the realization of the deeper intention and purpose. Now, in in this particular case, a likely... Um, purpose would be to save more and more lives every day. That would be the nature of the document and everything would be put in place to enable that to realize itself. So you see, when you think about the contract and the nature of a contract or the constitution, whatever you want to call it, it's imbued with deep levels of focus deep levels of intention it's it exists because of what it means to exist and so all of the awareness all the conscious awareness has been brought into all of those aspects and it's been illuminated and it's visible to everyone involved so that it can be autonomous And this is why, you know, many people, well, anyone that knows me well knows that um, we've, one of the future phases for the Powerhouse platform is that it, um, we're going to uh, implement into blockchain technology. And, you know, lots of people think, oh, you know, you're going to do cryptocurrency and sell Bitcoin and... (laughs) There's so much, such a huge level of uh, misunderstanding about what blockchain is and all the rest of it. And the reason we're utilizing, going to be utilizing blockchain is because of the autonomy. Because you can run an entire business based on the conditions of a smart, of a contract. So imagine a scenario where um, you've got an autonomous team enabled around this project with the person who's disabled, uh, with the person who's, um, yeah, disabled. 
and it's electronic, it's all visible to everyone involved. Let's say you've got a team of 15 people that, who are all collaborating to make it possible for this need to be met. Let's say you've got a whole bunch of strangers who are totally inspired by how this need is being met and are financially um, paying a monthly fee. And let's say that fee gets up to $10,000 a month. Then the powerhouse platform does this already. Then it can uh, it can distribute a percentage of that monthly fee to all of the collaborators involved, so that everyone is sharing in the success of the venture together. You know, that's what we built it for. We built it so we can dip our toes in, we can start engaging this behaviour, and and so that we can validate it and prove that it's possible. And of course, we already know it is at this point. Scaling it is the next challenge for us. And of course, blockchain is a huge, a huge component for that. But so imagine that business model is now running on blockchain and the conditions of that contract, of that constitution, are determining when the payments get made, how much of the payment gets made, um, at what point do we need to uh, redistribute some of this money to getting a new team member on board? Um, it, it, all of it's done based on consensus voting. It's all done digitally. That's what an autonomous business is. It's a business that that means that you do not have to know how to run a business in order to have a business. It means that you do not ha have to do anything in your business if you don't want to. Not necessarily just because you're not able. You may not want to. And in my particular case, I'm an even more extreme example than um, someone who is totally paralyzed. Because I don't want to physically do anything within my projects other than be the visionary behind them. I don't want to run them. I don't want to um, make the decisions within them. I just want to sh share my vision. And in order for me to do that effectively, I need someone who's... Um, who's a master of an interpreting a vision, <laughs> which fortunately I do have. She's my business partner. Her name's Linda. And in order for that vision to be realized, I need someone who can identify the ideal path forward. And I've got that as well. My other business partner, Tom, two extremely gifted people in those areas. And my projects will run in the exact same way that everyone else's will on the powerhouse platform being incubated through the Morpheus um, process, um, transitioning onto the surrogate virtual team platform until they can stand alone and either recruit people directly or um, get full-time freelancers on board or however that unfolds. And so this is my vision for autonomy. Now, a digital autonomous organization already exists on blockchain technology. Um, currently, there are huge limitations to blockchain technology that prevent um, a, a massive number of transactions taking place at once and, you know, often grinding the system to a halt. And But there are innovations happening all the time in that space. So that's what autonomy means. It means that you're co it's consciously self-governing, consciously self-governing.
And to allude to, if you've listened to my last podcast, this is what I mean by um, trusting. Trusting your instincts, trusting your impulses, trusting your thoughts, trusting your emotions in the moment that you receive them. Because through your intention, the moment that you express your intention with meaning, it means that you're expressing with conscious awareness what it is that you want. And the trust is in allowing whatever impulse you receive, you allow it to be the authentic experience in that moment. You allow it to carry you through to what it is you're wanting to create because you trust it. That's how you live autonomously but with conscious awareness. Is you're continually expressing yourself, putting the energy into the universe with clarity, with consciousness, with focus, using words that mean something, carrying your desires with words that mean something to you so that you can trust everything that you receive and you can live an autonomous life. And we we affectionately call this placing an order (laughs) within our team. Have we placed the order yet? And when we say, have we placed the order yet? It means, have we sat down and expressed what it is we really want with conscious focus? With as deep a focus as possible. And it's always the ideal scenario. Always. Based on the vision. Because your vision is also another thing that you have to trust. Whatever the vision you receive is valid always whether you're doing a meditation a guided meditation and going within your body into a into an organ within your body to feel into its nature whatever vision you receive you trust that it's always valid it's always valid And that feels like the right place to finish. (laughs) So, as you can see, with an autonomous organization, with conscious autonomy, there is the potential to meet currently unmet need. There is the potential to activate, um, well, I mean, can you imagine how much latent potential exists currently that could be utilized to meet a currently unmet need somewhere. If, if we can somehow activate the latent vision within the people who have the potential to realize it. Because as you can see, the moment that you reveal someone's highest potential to them as you see it, they get the excitement, they get the spark And then immediately the doubt pours in behind it. It's human nature. It's perfectly natural. But if we can just get into a space where we know that absolutely everything is possible. If we focus on what it is we actually want. And we share that vision relentlessly with. We enable ourselves to be seen so that people who have the potential to be inspired what it is by what it is we want to create in the world have the potential to express their self, themselves and collaborate with those people on those projects okay that's it for now cheers <laughs>